My Amplify La Familia. About 10 minutes ago, I received word and got confirmation on something that has drastically changed the way this video was about to go down. And that's Corey Graves apologizing for the whole Moro Ranallo situation. Now, was this an apology to Moro himself? No. It was more of an apology for the situation as a whole. So how sincere was it? That's in the eye of the beholder. But it was an apology nonetheless, and we'll go over that in just a few minutes. But in case you've been living underneath the rock for the past three nights, this whole situation flared up within the last 72 hours via a tweet that Corey Graves sent out intended for Moro Ranallo. And that tweet said, and I quote, from Graves, just for the record, guys, I know you wouldn't know it, but there's actually a WWE Hall of Famer and a former Ring of Honor champion on commentary. I'd imagine they'd have a lot to offer. Shrug shoulders emoji. And that was, again, obviously intended for Moro Ranallo. Some fans even agreed with Corey Graves. One fan tweeted to Graves on the amount of Chicago hip-hop references that Moro was giving out. And Corey Graves responded to that fan, far, far too many. So on more than one occasion, Corey Graves made it known Saturday night while Moro Ronaldo was busting his ass. Arguably one of the best, if not the best, play-by-play -play guy in this business. Busting his ass at War Games Takeover. And Corey Graves is playing the Twitter warrior and he is voicing his displeasure. He is telling the world that he is not a fan of Moro Ronaldo Saturday night. That became evident and obvious and abundantly clear via his tweets. More than one. Tweets with an S. Now, Moro subsequently deleted his Twitter and social media afterwards. And then, mysteriously and out of nowhere, never appeared on Survivor Series. And I, for one, was looking forward to his call on Adam Cole and Pete Dunne for the title. Survivor Series night. But we never got Moro. Michael Cole then just announced that Moro was so passionate and excited about calling the action Saturday night that he actually blew out his voice. Clearly something wasn't adding up. And late last night, we got confirmation. I mean, anything can change. We are still nine hours away from NXT tonight. But the latest confirmation, not just rumor, was that Moro Ronaldo will not be calling the action tonight for NXT on USA. Now again, 10 minutes ago, I got word that Corey Graves had in fact apologized, uh, apparently on his After the Bell podcast. Now I've never seen slash heard his podcast. I've never seeked it out. So I don't know when it actually airs. I've heard sound bites in the past, but I don't know when it actually airs. I just know that when I laid my dome piece down for the night last night, which was late, 1.35 a.m. to be exact, I was not hearing about any apology, so I don't know it, when this podcast actually airs, or maybe there was a delay to get that apology out to the masses, but I just found out about it 10 minutes uh, before shooting this video. Now, I will say it is very early on a Wednesday morning. I still question why it took three full days to put this apology out there. Any man, woman, or even child in this world would tell you that if you did something wrong, you say, I'm sorry. It was clear after three full days that this was just wrong. It was not the right way to go about business. It was poor judgment, and it was directed to somebody who didn't deserve it. There was no validity behind it. It doesn't matter your age range. You're, you're, you're taught very young to apologize for shit. You don't need three days to go by and find out that you irated a, a, an entire community and a mass of people. But anyway, this is Graves' apology. This is what he said, and I quote on his podcast, uh, apparently within the last 10 to 12 hours. Before we go any further, on a personal note, I needed to address something. This past Saturday, during the War Games Takeover e event, I sent out a tweet it was an unpopular opinion, as I often do with the intent of stirring up a little controversy. Something fun to talk about on TV or here on the show. He says, it was maybe not the most professional way to go about things, and it was never meant to offend or disrespect or disparage anybody. That was never my intention. I would never intentionally cause anybody undue stress, especially a co-worker. So I apologize. End quote. 
and apology. Now, if that was sincere or not, that's in the eye of the beholder. I always hated being the apology police and always trying to dissect if somebody's apology was sincere or not. I always think that we have a feeling within ourselves, in our gut, when we know somebody is sincere or not. We feel the passion and we feel the sorrow behind their actions and words that have caused such stress, pain, agony, or just disheartment. And, and, and you feel that in an apology. And then there's those apologies that you could just tell are just forced. They didn't want to do it. I mean, the initial tweet that caused this whole firestorm is still up on his page from what I'm being told. Um, so you got to, you know, you have to, you form your own conclusion. But I, I'm not going to sit here and be the, the apology police because who knows, maybe he called Moro. Maybe he had a sincere one-on-one -on -one apology to him. And then publicly he sent that out. Which is all he would need to do then. Just tell everybody, hey, it was my bad, it was my wrong. Uh, I would have added in there, I have spoken to Moro. And, and, and I will continue to show uh, my remorse. <laughs> Something just like that. Short, sweet, to the point. I've spoken to him, I'll continue to show my remorse. And uh, I'm saddened that I caused somebody else pain. Boom! Little comment you send out there. You could swallow your pride once in a while. You, you can you can lower the, the the ego just a notch, you know, because this was an obviously a tweet that was unjustified, and that's what I find the biggest issue with the tweet itself and who it was intended for as it pertains to its validity. The fact that it was to someone with bipolar disorder is a whole nother convo, and I'll touch on that in a little bit as well. But the tweet itself is unjustified on merit alone. Yes, they are a team. Moro, Beth, Nigel, they're a team. But every team has a point guard, a captain, a quarterback. Somebody that leads the team, and it has to be somebody other than the coach. Moro Ronaldo is the quarterback. Bottom line. Beth Phoenix is the running back. Cool. Nigel is the wide receiver. Awesome. Both play vital roles on the team. But Moro is the quarterback, and only the quarterback touches the ball on every single play. As it pertains to offense, anyway. But only the quarterback touches that ball every single down on offense. Not the running back, not the wide receiver. The quarterback only touches the ball every play. And there's a reason for that. He leads the team. Moro is obviously the leader of that commentary team, as it should be, because he's the best at what he does. 25% Beth, 25% Nigel, 50% Moro. That is a winning combination. To be honest, I'd be fine with Moro doing some Joey Styles type of shit and calling an entire event by himself. But also, if I'm being honest, I like the infusion of Beth Phoenix and Nigel. It works. But the passion in the play-by-play -play calling by Moro is what captivates us. You don't fuck with something if it's not broken. Don't fix what's not broken is the old adage. Don't fuck with something that is working. It works. Beth Phoenix is awesome. She absolutely contributes big time to the show. And in a perfect allotted amount, I feel. Nigel, same thing. They come in at the right times and it works beautifully. But Moro Ronaldo is obviously running the show as it should be. He's Moro. Have you ever heard him? And you know Vince McMahon was happier than a pig in shit when he knew Ronaldo was not going to be on Survivor Series. I wouldn't put it past Vince to make the final call to leave Moro off and to take him off. Because he knew Moro Ronaldo was going to steal the show. Could you imagine when the casual fan who has never heard Moro Ronaldo before, and you have all these commentators on Survivor Series, everybody, all hands on deck, all the commentators got to call some matches. Could you imagine Moro Ronaldo putting everyone to shame? You have Michael Cole call matches, and then Moro Ronaldo is calling Adam Cole versus Pete Dunne. And then you go back to Michael Cole a match later. Everyone's going to be like, no, where's the other guy? What's his name? Michael? Michael Ronaldo? Mark? Mark Ronaldo? Who is he? Oh, uh, you mean Moro? Whatever, put him back. <laughs> Vince knew he would 
He would absolutely annihilate them underneath that headset and on that mic. He would annihilate them just like he did the first time and Vince wanted him out. Mauro Ronaldo is amazing at what he does. So to honestly go and attack him via your tweet of all the people, of all the people that you're going to tend to be your target, he says, I know you wouldn't know it, but there's actually a WWE Hall of Famer, meaning Beth Phoenix, and a former Ring of Honor champion, Nigel, on commentary. I'd imagine they'd have a lot to offer. They do offer a lot, and in the right places, and it sounds amazing. They gel beautifully together. It is an amazing team. But half of it is going to be more Ronaldo for justified reasons. Nobody's in his league. Let the quarterback be the quarterback. Let the point guard be the point guard. Let the captain be the captain. Don't ruin a winning combination. And I know there's a little fraternity within the family, right? Everybody has their own thing. I'm sure the referees in WWE are their own little fraternity. Uh, the, the, the women's roster, their own little fraternity, the men's roster, the, the commentators, they have their own little fraternity because they know what it takes to do what they do on that level. And they all have their, their gripes and they all have things that they like. They all have their pet peeves and things that they love. And Corey Graves is just not a fan of Moro. So when he goes and attacks him on social media, it's within their family. It's within that fraternity. So I don't want to jump on it too much in that aspect because that's a fight that has to happen within the family. But now that's when the bigger topic at large enters frame. And that's more Ronaldo having bipolar disorder. Because you can't argue like you would within your family members. Or with your family members, right? You picture your family, right? You're going to have your, your qualms, your squirrels. You're going to have your arguments from time to time. But with more Ronaldo, you have to kind of walk on eggshells. You're walking on thin ice because you have to watch what you say around Moro. On one, in one aspect, that makes you a better human being. Watch what you fucking say, be mature. But on the other aspect, and on the other hand, that's, that sucks to have to be that way. That you can't critique your fellow family member and fellow fraternity member the way you want to. Now, the way he did it, obviously unjustified and in the most unprofessional manner. Why would you do that on Twitter when Moro is busting his ass Saturday night and you're over playing Twitter warrior uh, about the job that he's doing and how it's not good basically. So absolutely it shouldn't have been on Twitter, but say Corey Graves did it off camera. Say he did it backstage. Just him and Moro. Would Moro have acted the same way? Because we've seen this isn't the first situation. Moro also had the issue with Vince McMahon first, then he had an issue with JBL, and now it's with Corey Graves. So that type of thin skin, I understand the disorder. Trust me on that. But is this the right business? Is this the right company? Is this the right industry for Moro to be in if this type of shit is happening repeatedly? I'm asking the question. I don't know. I'm saying for his health. Trust me, I'm pro Moro in this whole battle. But for his health, for his sanity, maybe it's best to walk away. And I would hate that because as a fan, I lose out. We lose out. We lose Moro Ronaldo. But we want this guy to be okay. It looks like this job is causing just immense stress for him. And if something as little as a tweet by Corey Graves sets him off to delete social media... Just like we saw him act with the whole JBL situation, that's not good for a lot of people involved. In the WWE, but more specifically, I don't want to just place this on WWE, pro wrestling as a whole, the industry, you have to have thick skin. You have to. I understand it hurts more when it's somebody within your family, like Corey Graves, his own fraternity, but you have to have thick skin. You have to. I think it is amazing what Moro Ronaldo has been able to do with bipolar disorder to be able to go out there on Wednesdays and Saturdays and he does boxing on Showtime and, and MMA. He does all of this while having that. I know so many commentators, play-by-play -play guys that couldn't lace his shoes. And they're completely fine mentally. Or so they think. They probably got a couple two-tree screws loose as well. But completely fine for the most part. And they're not even in Moro's league. So I give him all the props in the world. But maybe for his own sanity, his own safety and mental health capacity, maybe it's best to walk away. 
because you do have to have thick skin in this business. I'm telling you guys, this isn't just a WWE thing. I wish I could say, oh, it's just some WWE idiots. JBL's bullying and Corey Graves is bullying. No, I can't say that because I've been around so many independent organizations from New England to Florida. Couple over on the West Coast. But from New England to Florida, I've been around some pretty dominant independent circuit scenes. And let me tell you, you gotta have thick skin in those locker rooms. Because everything isn't nice. You know, there are some harsh critiques. And they pull no punches. And, and it's in, in a lot of ways, they're, they're trying to help you, maybe even. Not in this case, obviously. Corey Graves were just being an ass. But I don't know where we go from here is, is what I'm saying. I, I mean, is, this, is that the end? So nobody can ever say anything within that business to more Ronaldo? Or, or does it, is it just because it was on social media? I don't like the fact that these type of things make Mauro Ronaldo go in a total tailspin uh, in a downward spiral. I don't like that because I'm thinking about Mauro Ronaldo as the human being and his safety and sanity. That's not cool. You can't even just throw all of this on Graves. I don't think Graves... I, Graves knew Mauro Ronaldo's condition, no doubt. I, I, I know he knows for a fact what Mauro has, but you're telling me that Graves sent that out and thought, oh, I'm really going to downward spiral him now. Yes. It absolutely was insensitive. But nobody could have sent that out and thought that this was going to stem from it. I'm not letting Graves off the hook. Trust me, you saw how I opened up this vid. And if you saw other vids on, on Corey Graves, you know my feelings on the guy. It's a love-hate relationship. Sometimes I love the guy because he's all we have left for that, that Pro heel commentator. You know what we used to see in Bobby Heenan and Jesse Ventura. You know, we have Corey Graves to really play the storyline. You know, somebody got poked in the eye or somebody got low blowed. What are you talking about? I didn't see it. The referee must have dropped the contact. You know, somebody has to tell that story from the heel's perspective. Corey Graves is that person. So I love it in that aspect. On the other hand, he says some stupid shit. A lot. You know, so I don't know. Corey Graves is kind of that mystery for me. One day you love him, the other day you want to throw him out the fucking car window going 90 down the highway. You don't know. But I know that Mauro Ronaldo, um, he's got to thicken up. I understand the bipolar. I get it, guys. I do. There has to be some way that he can thicken up a little bit that skin. Or this is not the industry for him. It's just not. If you're going to say BC, maybe every should, everybody should just be kind to one another. Yes, in a beautiful, perfect world, that would be awesome. We're, we're flawed human beings. We're flawed creatures. We're, we're, we're sinned by nature. From the beginning of time, we sin. It's what we do. So these mistakes are going to stem from time to time. It's going to happen. Everybody gets dragged. Especially if you're in the public eye and especially within your own family slash fraternity, everybody's going to get dragged from time to time. We wish it wasn't on social media, no question. But people are not always going to be a fan of yours. So I have serious, serious worries on the whole Moro Ronaldo situation within himself. As far as Corey Graves, it was insensitive, it was stupid, it was unjustified, and it was on baseless merit. So there was, uh, it was totally uncalled for. Um, the apology was made at least. Was it sincere or not? That's in the eye of the beholder. And that's where we stand. Did something happen backstage where Corey Graves has apologized? Hopefully. But more importantly, hopefully we get more Ronaldo back commentating and more healthier than ever before. We want him on his A game. But I just hope that Moro understands at some point, man. Don't worry about... The noise on the side. You are the fucking best at what you do. And we, people like me, people like a lot of you, we're constantly telling you that for a reason. You don't need, even if it's in your fraternity, you don't need to hear that noise. When you're at the top, they're always going to be talking about you. When they stop talking about you, that's when you need to worry. Because then you're doing something wrong. I'm the Amplified Man. Thanks for this impromptu video uh, and, and, and checking it out, guys. Um, it means a lot. I'm glad I could get something out there to you guys and talk some pro wrestling. I wanted to touch up on this situation, but I wanted it to unfold a little bit more. I wanted to, uh, to really get a little bit more details before I, I said something about it.
But I don't know, maybe we'll find out more in the future as well. But uh, that's where we sit now. It's, it's just one of those situations that is just needless. It really is. But it's going to happen, especially in an industry like this. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Two different videos. NXT will have its own video and AEW will have its own video because the tube just doesn't like me putting it together for some reason. I have no idea. They, they don't like me doing a lot of things on this channel. That's one of them. So now I have to separate the review. It is Thanksgiving tomorrow, but we're not taking a day off. Two videos tomorrow. NXT will have a separate review. AEW a separate review. Podcast Friday. Smackdown review on Saturday. A lot of content still to come. So, the Amplified Man. I hope you guys kick the rest of this Wednesday's ass. I'll see you in the morning. And NXT won the ratings last week, so we will start off with the NXT review, and then later in the day, AEW. For now, wow! Amplified Man. Check you later.